Good morning. Happy Sunday. Come on in. Grab a seat. Grab your coffee. Clean your glasses. <laughs> How are you? Say hi if you want to. Happy Sunday, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Okay. Okay. There. <laughs> Let's see what's happening. See, grab your coffee. Clean your glasses. Hi, Alma. Good morning, Ann. How are you? Good to see you. Good morning, Lynn. Thank you. You like this? I wore this just for Alma. <laughs> Alma lives in Chicago, and uh, we've been beating up on the Cubs this weekend. If we win today, we sweep them, and we take their spot away from them for the World Series, if I'm not mistaken. This is a hat I got when I went to the ladies' night at the game. Had to do it. Had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Last night was a very late game, Alma. 13 innings. They just kept tying it up and tying it up. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I got to go to bed. It's Saturday night. But you know what I always say? If you get down on Saturday night, you still got to get up for church on Sunday morning. And here I am. Good morning, Gary. And I'm glad you're doing good. Oh, I have to uh, do this and do that. And I have to share this. There. We're now on our church page, too. Okay. Well, welcome to church, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to spend some time with the Lord. We are doing the series on... the. I almost said mysteries, miracles of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I am Pastor Cheryl, and you have found AJ Cowboy Church. Welcome. Please share this message because we're all about saving lost souls, aren't we? Anyway, it's kind of hard to get this whole Diamondback logo on the screen, but uh, we'll do the best we can. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I want everybody to know, hold on, what's going on here? Okay. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Jeff. Jay Lloyd. Hi, Jay. Wow, what a nice surprise. God bless you. How good to see you. Perfect day to be here, Jay, because... I have reserved the park for this season's church in the park. Jay, maybe I'll get to see you this year. Uh, we have three dates reserved. You might want to write these on your calendar. I will be posting them on the church page um, this afternoon. But, uh, of course, we're, our um, first service will be November 19th, which is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, that's the day we will be collecting toys for our toy drive, uh, collecting money for our toy and food drive. And I am also going to post the address. And we have a Venmo and we have a PayPal. Somebody please send in some money. Actually, we did get our first donation of a hundred dollars this week towards starting off kicking off the toy drive and I want to thank Fran and her brother-in-law Lee who we've been praying for by the way continued prayers for him he went back home and is gonna finish his recuperation there but before he left he left a donation for Cowboy Church for the kids so Lee, I hope you're watching, and thank you very much. And Franny, 
Thank you very much. Um, that's a nice way to start our toy drive. Boy, imagine how good we would do if everybody gave the best amount they can. And I know you do, and I thank you for that. So, start thinking about the toy drive. Um, we are. So, the dates for church in the park, November 19th, which is the Thursday before Thanksgiving. December 24th, we get to have church on Christmas Eve. Very excited about that. And March, whatever day is Easter, I believe it's March 31st. Um, October, November, December, January, February, March. Yes, March 31st. So we have uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter scheduled. And please, please keep in mind our toy and food drive. Last year we did so well, and the need is so great. And uh, you will be blessed. So, um, also speaking of Lee and prayers, please keep our friend R.W. He shows up here as Rex Trigger Point every now and then. He might be here today. I don't know. Rex, are you here? Um... Good morning, Franny. That's the lady I was just talking about. We had lunch every, eh, once a month or something, breakfast. And Fran, thank you for your donation, the kickoff to our toy and food drive. You are awesome. And please be sure to let Lee know. We are thanking him and still praying for him. And we need to keep praying for RW, Rex Trigger Point. I don't see him here yet but anyway keep him in your prayers uh, reminder no church next week um, I will be saying words at a memorial service I don't know I'm thinking I might jump on because this the story after this one is very short and I might jump on and just read the scripture real fast I don't know but Please know that um, there is no church next week. We'll pick up for sure the week after, and thank you for understanding. Um, okay. And, um, yes, I am wearing my Diamondbacks shirt because the Diamondbacks are busy kicking Chicago Cubs butts this weekend, and the third game is today after church. Let's go, D-backs. I'm a crazy fanatic. I mean, they might make it to the World Series this week. They're this close. And today's game could decide that. I don't pray for sports games, but I sure hope they win. <laughs> I have a joke for you. You ready? Here we go. If you want to share this, now's a good time because they won't miss the joke of the day. I'll give you a minute to share this on your own page so they don't miss the joke of the day. Take a sip of my tea. It's been a good week. I hope everybody had a good week. Looking forward to next week. Um, oh, and this is one of my art pieces that I made. I've been very busy. I thought I'd put it out here because it's purple. How does it go? Like this. It's really hard. There. Ain't it cool? I'm going to be selling these. Okay, I have a website being built, and there's a store here in Apache Junction that's going to be selling these. It's called... Um, treasure chest too and uh, stay tuned for that but uh, this is just one sample and it matches what I'm wearing so I'm doing a little advertisement for uh, my coaster art and every piece I make I pray over so stay tuned for more information my website name is my art by Cheryl Rose and it's under construction coming soon lots happening the lord is so good to me as if i need one more job <laughs> okay. 
Okay, here, my friends, is your joke of the day. Are you ready? You're going to like it. Two old baseball players are sitting on the front porch of an old baseball player's home, just a rocking away. They are sitting there talking with each other about the good old days when Harry says to Fred, Fred, I wonder if there's baseball in heaven. Puzzled, Fred said, I don't know if there's baseball in heaven, but let's make a pact. If one of us, first one of us to die goes to heaven, then he comes back and tells the other one if there's baseball in heaven. Harry says, you know, Fred, that's a good idea. Let's make a pact to do just that. So they shook hands on it. Well, don't you know, a month or so later, Harry dies. Fred is sitting around missing his buddy Harry, wondering if there's baseball in heaven. When all of a sudden, poof, there's Harry standing right in front of Fred. Harry says, hey, Fred, dying wasn't so bad after all. I'm in heaven. Fred says to Harry, Buddy, I'm glad you are safe and in heaven, but what about our pact? Tell me, is there baseball in heaven? Harry says, well, Fred, there's good news and there's bad news. Fred says, give me the good news first. Harry says, there's definitely baseball in heaven. Grinning from ear to ear, yay. Fred said, Harry, that's incredibly good great news man man will be able to play baseball in heaven what could possibly be the bad news harry answers fred you're pitching saturday <laughs> there you go there's your joke of the day <laughs> Sunday, everybody. <laughs>
We are studying the miracles of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And there are 37 of them in the New Testament that have been recorded. There were many, many more, but that's the amount we have written down in the New Testament. I'm going to put this away because I get very distracted. And yes, Franny, he's going to stay right there. I haven't taken it out of the frame yet, but anyways. Not looking at your comments, but feel free to talk amongst yourself. Gary, watch what you say. And please share this message. So we are studying the miracles of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God gave him, he came with miracles and there are five reasons I can tell you that why Jesus used miracles they miracles are a sign of prophecies fulfilled they are a sign that Jesus is indeed the long-awaited Messiah they are a sign of his authority his power and his glory and they are a sign of God's love for us a sign that we can trust him and we are in Matthew chapter 15 starting at verse 21 the faith of a Gentile woman then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of, of Tyre and Sidon he didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in, but he couldn't keep it a secret. Right away, a woman had heard about him and came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. But she came and worshiped him again, pleading again, Lord, help me. Since she was a Gentile, Jesus told her, First, I should feed the children, my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. And she replied, That's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. He said, now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And her daughter was instantly healed. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed, and the demon was gone. Amen. 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 So, um, never was a man ever so followed as Jesus was in Galilee. He was very famous. He was very popular. And to teach us not to decline, and therefore to teach us not to decline any opportunity of doing good, but not to be fond of popular, not to want to be famous and popular. He left Galilee and went to the borders on the coast, which was a three-day walk from where he was. And he was not so well known there. And he stayed in a private house where he thought no one would know it. And this... happened because it was prophesied 
that he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall his voice be heard in the streets. He did not strive to be popular. He didn't want to be popular. He just wanted to do his job and travel. He was willing to preach and heal in other places. But here where he was in Tyre, he would be sought after by just one woman, not like the crowds of Galilee. Okay, he wasn't popular in this part of the country. Um, there was a long-standing feud between them and the Jews. And uh, we'll get into that more a little bit later. And we need to note as there is time to appear, there is also time to rest. You have to take time to rest. Jesus had to take time to rest. So this is why in his travels he went on a path that led him to this town where he wasn't so popular. And he went there on purpose, of course, to drop this one miracle, to plant the seed, if you will. But he could not be hidden, just as the scripture that says you can't put a candle, shouldn't put a candle under a basket. You will not share the light. Although that candle can be put under a basket and the light will be hidden, the sun cannot. The Son of God cannot be hidden. He was too well known to try to be incognito, to, to be hidden, to stay at a house and don't tell anybody I'm here. Because the word got out. It just got out somehow, some way. That's the way word traveled there. They didn't have phones, they didn't have TV, they didn't have cars. It took them three days to walk there. You know, do you ever wonder when Jesus, I like to go to MapQuest and look it up and say, how long a walk is it from Galilee to Tyre? Well, that's how I found out it's a three-day walk, because you could click on walk, and it tells you how long it takes from here to there. And sometimes it'll say, I can't find a route. But if you look at the map, they have to go clear all the way around a mountain range, I believe, to get there and it took them three days and I wonder how much teaching was done when they were traveling like that I bet a lot of it a lot of stories that's when he explained sorry I wasn't comfortable that's better that's when he explained a lot of the things to the disciples that they needed to know and those in this area who had only heard of his fame but could not talk with him, they would soon say, this must be Jesus. How cool is that? And all of a sudden there's Jesus. And that is what we are going to say when he returns and the signs are showing us that he is here. We will say, this must be Jesus. <laughs> It almost makes me cry. <laughs> the request made to him by the woman in distress and trouble was at first turned away. Were you shocked when he ignored her? And she called from a distance like the lepers did. Remember, the lepers were way over here and they said, Lord, have mercy. And that's what she said, isn't it? Lord, have mercy. My daughter, my daughter is possessed by a demon. <laughs> and, you know, I, I can't help but laugh thinking about uh, teenagers, you know. They're all possessed by a demon. They are crazy kids at that age. And we need to remember to pray for our children, especially especially when they are going through their phases, okay? But this girl indeed had a demon, a devil in her. 
So she fell at his feet. She went back to him. She prayed one time, and he declined her. So she came back, pleading again, Lord, help me. And she was discouraged. She was discouraged, but she did not quit. And he answered not a word, it said. And his disciple says, Lord, make her go away. She's bothering us, Lord. They protected him. They're like, no, no, no. Jesus, Jesus said, go away, now go away. And Jesus told them earlier on another lesson that these were not people he wanted them to associate with. And when Jesus gave them the law, they followed it. Okay, so he knew this. They knew this was a Gentile woman. She pestered them and stayed after them. And they, they had had enough, but Jesus did not. Okay. So she asked again. She threw herself at his feet. She humbled herself before him. And... changed his mind didn't he no Jesus when a person but Christ <laughs> sorry I, I uh, thank you Lord <laughs> I had to ask to focus my brain let me just back up here again those that would want mercy from Jesus must throw themselves at his feet. This happened with Lazarus when, when Mary met Jesus at the tomb. She threw herself at his feet and begged him and told him, Lord, if you were here, my brother would be alive now. And she cried and Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And Jesus never turned away anybody that threw themselves at his feet and begged for mercy. Any person that is bold enough and has the confidence to throw him themselves at his feet as a poor trembling soul may do, he will answer their prayers. And she told him what she wanted that please remove the demon from my daughter. People, the greatest blessing we can ask of Jesus for our children is that he would break the power of Satan. That is the power of sin in their souls. And that he would remove the unclean spirit that they may be temples of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit would dwell in them. And he said unto her, he said to her, Let the children first be filled. Let the Jews have all the miracles brought for them that they have need of, who are God's chosen people. The Jews were the chosen people. The Gentiles were not. They were far removed from being favorites. And let not that which was intended for them be thrown to those who are not of God's family and who have not, who don't know him, have no interest in him. And they are like dogs in comparison to Jesus' chosen people. And when Christ knows the faith of the person praying to be strong, he sometimes puts it to the test. He loves that. He loves a person with strong faith. But by his saying, let the children first be filled, he shows that there might be a little mercy left for the Gentiles. There just might be. They might get the leftovers. And later on, the Jews were turning away 
the gift that was brought, brought for them. They turned against him, didn't they? And some of them wished he would just go away. They didn't want him around, the Pharisees. No, they were turning away the food that was brought to them. They began, as Matthew Henry said, the children began to play with their meat. Their loathings would be a feast for the Gentiles. But the apostles followed the rule. Let the children be filled first. Let the Jews get first dibs, if you will. And if their souls loathe this treat, we turn to the Gentiles. They hunger for this, in particular, this woman. She said, yes, Lord, I know it's true that the children's bread should not be thrown to the dogs, but they were never denied the crumbs of that bread. It belongs to them. And they are allowed a place under the table that they may be ready to receive them. I'm not asking for a loaf of bread, she said. Not even a morsel, only a crumb, Lord. Please do not refuse me, just a crumb, my daughter, my daughter. She speaks this not to make light of the mercy of the Lord, not to undervalue it, or um, but rather magnifying the abundance of miraculous cures that she heard that the Jews were feasting on. Stories went around of all the miracles Jesus performed for the Jewish nation. In comparison, with a single cure, but a crumb, Lord. There was not a crowd surrounding Jesus in this area. A single woman, I come alone. Just me, Lord. I fall at your feet, Lord. Maybe she heard about the feeding of the 5,000. And after that, they gathered up all the fragments. Maybe there could be some of those crumbs left for the dogs. And here, she refers to the dogs as your pets. Your pets are under your table. The crumbs fall. They nibble them up. Right? And this encourages us to pray. And pray continuously and don't stop and the crumb he gave her was the devil is out of your daughter go see your daughter the miracles let's encourage us to pray and not to faint to continue in prayer not doubting but to continue in faith and this woman's faith was great. She had just heard he was in town and went down and, and threw herself at his feet. Mercy, Lord. I know who you are. I've heard your stories. But she said very few words. But by what she did, she spoke volumes. And Jesus, all he said, let it be done. Go home, see your daughter. And she came home depending on the word of Jesus that her daughter was healed. And that's how she found her. The devil was gone. And please note, Jesus does not have to be there to perform his miracles, does he? We saw that already. With the, with the lepers, remember? He told them, go to the priest and let them check you out. And they started walking. And the, and the sores started healing as they walked. And let's not forget that only one came back to thank him. And the rest went forward. And they were all healed as well. But only one 
was healed by their faith. Christ can conquer Satan from a distance. You can pray for anything from exactly where you are, and miracles can happen. Miracles do happen. And it was not when the demons saw him as when he cast them out of the pigs. They didn't have to see him either. They yielded to his power from afar, whether they saw him or not. For the Spirit is not bound. The Spirit of the Lord is not tied up. And the woman went home and found her daughter, not in any agitation, but very quietly laying on the bed, waiting for her mother's return to rejoice with her that she was finally, finally so perfectly well. Perfectly well, Matthew Henry said. It was gone. She can go on with her life without these demons. Her mother can love her daughter without dealing with these demons. You can only imagine how terrible it had been. Jesus never turned away from those that fell at his feet, which a poor, trembling soul would do. And she was a good woman, a good mother. This is what sent her to go and seek out Jesus Christ. And his saying, let the children first be filled, shows there was mercy for the Gentiles. She smoke, spoke not making light of mercy, but magnifying the abundance of the miracles being performed all around them, but not with them, not in their town. And she got a miracle out of Jesus while he was there, by her faith, her faith alone, by falling at her feet. And Jesus let her ask a few times because he had to follow his own rules, you see. The apostles were taught by him how to act, how to behave, who to help, and who to not help. You remember the scripture of them going into towns and being turned away and when they're turned away, Jesus said, kick the dirt off your feet, leave them to their fate. Some people are not worthy, do not have the faith. And Jesus tries and tried and tried until finally he gave up. He knew that is not one I can get. Kick the dirt off your feet and move on. There's others to see. And there's so much. This particular um, story was told by two of the apostles, by Matthew and Mark. Uh, in Matthew, it's chapter 15, and in Mark, it's chapter 7. Though cr Her address was persistent, and she cried to him from a distance not wanting to get too close, seeing that she was a Gentile or a Canaanite. She didn't want to offend him. They, they, were just, they, knew, they knew they were not in good standing with Jews, and they knew Jesus was, Jew, was a Jew. And when people are um, object to what Jesus was talking, it would often provoke him to withdraw, to remove the candlestick out of its place, to quote scripture. It says in Revelation, I will take your candlestick from you. I will take the light from you. If you don't want it, I will take it away. He has long patience. He is a very patient man. And though he will endure long, he will not always endure. The contradiction of sinners against himself. 
Matthew 10, 14 says, If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Let them alone. And he did, and the disciples did. But he saved a morsel for the good souls, for the ones with faith that come to him, for the lost souls, which we are after. And when people are sick or have a demon in them, it is the distress and trouble of the entire family. And this woman came to Jesus for her family, for her daughter, not for herself, for her family. And it is a good thing to make the illnesses and the afflictions of others, especially in our family, our own in sense and in sympathy. Mercies to the children are mercies to the parents. Favors to ours are favors to us. It is the duty of parents to pray for their children and to be earnest in their prayers, especially when it comes to their souls. Parents need to look upon it as a great mercy to themselves to have Satan's power broken in the souls of their children. Uh, I was raised Catholic, and the Catholic Church baptizes infants to wash away the original sin, is what they call it. And, of course, the original sin was when Eve disobeyed the Lord and ate from the tree of life that she was not supposed to touch. And it was because the devil got in her that that happened, so therefore we're washing away Satan's hold on a child in their infancy. And then later on, when they make their confirmation, they take their baptismal vows for themselves and speak up for themselves. They accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When he cried out to her and he answered not a word, she could have been discouraged. She should have said, what the heck, this is Jesus Christ from Nazareth and all the stories I heard. Boy, he's not so great. I'm not impressed. No. She continued. She prayed harder. And we need to know not every accepted prayer is immediately an answered prayer. God hears all our prayers, but he does not answer right away. Sometimes you feel like, God, I've prayed and prayed and prayed and God's not answering. Like he's asleep. He must be asleep. But no. He waits. He waits to improve your faith. He wants to see how much more you will pray. He tells you, knock. Keep on knocking. And when finally your prayers are answered, you glorify God. You worship God. You thank God. And the Lord wants to be worshipped and glorified and thanked. Hallowed be thy name. Your name is holy, Lord. We love you, Lord. You are magnificent, Lord. He wants to hear this. And this is what we must do. We have to continue praying. Change the way you pray. We need to know that charity is extended to all. But spiritual dignities are saved for the household of faith. It is, it is wasting the bread on those that have no faith, 
the non-believers. It is the will of God that we should continue always in prayer. We should always pray and not give up. Common charity goes to all. Gifts of the Lord, not so much. She went away and improved her prayer. She worshipped him. She paid him more respect. Lord, help me, she said. When our prayers are deferred by God, he is teaching us, pray more, pray better. I'm listening. You might not know he's listening, but he is. Her prayer was very short. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen my faith now, is what he heard. I'm going to strengthen your faith now, Cheryl. Keep praying, Cheryl. Let the right hand uphold me. Fill while my soul is following hard after thee. Lord, help me. She never thought bad of, of Jesus Christ. She never thought, oh, he's not so great. He didn't even acknowledge that I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him, and he didn't even look at me. He just kept right on going. No, she asked again, a simple prayer. Her faith was great. She was begging for her daughter's life. Her daughter's illness was her illness. And Jesus knew all this. Lord, help me. This is a good prayer. This is a good prayer because the Lord knows your needs. It's simple. It's to the point. This poor woman resolved to make the best of it. She took his own words back at him. Yes, but Lord, don't the dogs get the crumbs? Aren't there just crumbs that this dog can have? Can't you please... Give my dog a crumb, Lord. You cannot speak meanly and put down a humble believer. Even though some put down and did not believe in Jesus, did not believe in his majesty, did not believe he was the Messiah, Continue praying. Keep the faith. Faith will save you. Jesus can perform miracles. He did. Just by saying, go, your daughter's healed. He didn't have to lay hands on her. He didn't have to be in the same room with her. He was there. He knew. He knew where her daughter was. He knew what the problem was. He knew he could fix it. And he waited. And he gave her a crumb. Lord, help me. Let that be your prayer. It's easy. You don't have to stop what you're doing. L say it out loud. Say it in your heart. Say it with your mouth. Lord, help me. Say it with me now. Lord, help me. We all have problems we need help with. Lord, help me. And I ask you now for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So that he can help you accept Jesus Christ. As Peter said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Pray for your children's souls to get the devil out of him so the Spirit can move in. And he will. And pray and keep on praying. And we are going to pray right now for you lost souls that are hearing my voice. Come to the Lord. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you too can have eternity in the peacefulness of heaven. 
This is our prayer circle. This is where we come and lay our requests at the feet of the Lord and give thanks for answered prayers. Dear Lord, we pray for the lost souls. Lord, we pray we can bring in a lost soul to be part of the family, Lord. Touch their heart, bring them in. We pray, Lord, for those who are battling cancer, Lord. Please cure them. Please take care of their family, their caregivers, and bless the doctors and nurses that help them, Lord, through you. We pray for those who are living in an abusive household, Lord. Please touch the heart of the abuser that he knocks it off, Lord, and keep those being abused safe. We pray, Lord, for wisdom and faith and for all those things that lie silent in our hearts. I also want us to remember our troops who are around the world in harm's way, Lord. Please spread your wings above them and keep them safe, Lord, that they come home to their loved ones. For all those things that lie silent in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Feel free, everybody, if you have any prayer requests, post them. Post them right now. Send them to me. We will pray for you. Good morning, Rex. God bless you. We pray for you, Rex. Our W's here, you guys. We prayed for him earlier. Love you. Good morning. I see you now. I'm freezing up. Okay. Everybody, let's join hands virtually and pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Are you ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Well, everybody, thank you for coming to church. God bless you. Remember, no church next week. I will be saying words at a memorial service. So, see you the week after that. We will continue with the miracles of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Read your Bible. You can read the next miracle in the book of Mark, chapter 7. You can pick up there. He's got lots of miracles in this book, and so does Matthew. But God bless you. Thank you for coming to church. Have prayer requests, send them to me. R.W., I hope you're feeling better, my friend. Kim, hello. Who else did I not see? Kim has a prayer request. Amen. Everybody read Kim's. Praise the Lord. Here is a miracle right here. A cure. Amen. God bless her, Kim. Thank you for sharing that testimony. Cry and see what you did. I love you, Kim. Thank you. Tell your mom I love her too. I'm so glad. A miracle cure right here in our little church. God bless you. All right, I got to go. It's almost time for the ball game anyway. <laughs> Let's go Diamondbacks. Okay, everybody, I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless. Remember, God loves you and so do I. And remember, if you get down on Saturday night, you if you get down on Saturday night, you still got to get up for work on Sunday morning. Kim, 
You made my day. Happy tears. You know me. Happy tears. All right, everybody. Amen, Frammy. Amen, Frammy. Frammy. <laughs> and yes, praying for our children as they are surrounded by evil. Lord, protect them. Amen. Amen, amen. I got to go. I love you. Have a great day. I'll see you in two weeks, okay? Peace out. Go pat my bags. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you. So does my friend here. <laughs> Bye-bye. Have a great week. Take care, Gary. Thanks for everything. Bye, Mom.